Hi everyone, I'm Mary, and today we're going to be watching... I'm not entirely sure what. It's UALA, a My Hero abridged live-action short set in Los Angeles in the My Hero Academy universe. It's the LA branch of UA. I have literally exhausted every single thing I know about this. Oh, it's also by Riven x 3 i uh, I've never actually seen this stuff, so... I don't really know if that's a good or a bad thing, but I'm going with good because it was heavily recommended. So, yeah. I'm just going to jump right in and check it out. I don't really know what we're getting into here. I just know that there's part one and two we're going to be looking at today. And then there's uh, Prologue Zero or Episode Zero, which I'll be checking out after this. But, yeah. Live action UA, Los Angeles. I am both excited and terrified to see just where this goes. It's all the same. You guys know the deal. There's a link to episodes 1 and 2 down below. Make sure to hit them up. Let's get started. Fight inspired by My Hero Academy. I am so surprised. It's like they put in the title. UA Los Angeles. Oh. Oh, the camera's really steady. I'm going with her probably showing he stole money. Oh my god, it's not Deku! Sorry, it's just the backpack. It's just something about holding the backpack that way gives me such a Deku vibe. I love it! Also, the camera work on this is really solid. I love- ooh, that's super impressive. Okay, dude. I don't know why, but something about loosening a tie and taking off the glasses is just so damn cool. Ooh. I mean, it's just something as simple as throwing- Did he just- Damn! Point teleportation. Nice effect. That's... Okay, so they're not just copying it. They're actually going with a unique power. Dude! Holy crap! How have I never seen this before? This is insane! <laughs> oh my god! I mean, it's like, it's so simplistic. It's literally fighting with a backpack. Just the use of the lens flare to show when he teleports. It's like that little flash out. It's great because it hides when he's moving, but at the same time it lets them splice the video to easily throw it in. And it just it and because the camera's always moving, oh that's he has the all might. Oh god. Holy crap. Okay, I was expecting, like, maybe some rudimentary fight mechanics. I was expecting it, like, obviously just copying the My Hero powers and just saying L.A. No, they just, they were doing a completely silent, just one, maybe minute and a half fight that was beautifully shot. The camera was constantly moving. It gave so much dynamic expression to the show. And I'm going to say it's a show because there's multiple episodes at this point. And just... So many of the little technical effects, like I mentioned while it was happening, the lens flare, whenever he teleported, one, point-to-point -point teleportation, really cool effect to have shown. And they did it beautifully. I've seen some TV shows where they just had a popping sound. Sometimes they show a rushing air. In this one, they did light. But that's a great choice because it does two things really well. First, I mean, you just don't need to worry about making the guy match up with what he's teleporting in because... There's a lens flare, so it covers it, so as soon as you take that effect away, he's there, and that looks perfect. And because it overwhelms everything, it also hides all the imperfection of having to match up different images, so it makes that tons easier. But it looks good, and because the camera's always moving, you expect things to move from the previous position. So between the moving camera and the lens flare, the teleportation effect looks phenomenal, and it doesn't have any issues. It looked perfect. What really shocked me, though, was just how well they did the choreography and the effect to show power of all the wind blowing from someone. Like, the effect of things being pushed away from an action. That's very much a DBZ thing, to show powering up by, you know, airflow. The fact that it works so well in this one, they got the effect just so damn well. That's so cool. There was not a word said in the first, like, minute and a half. But you knew what was happening. You had a UA student because... The guy was basically not Deku because of how he was holding the backpack. He had the colors. He had the iconic outfit. And then you have the one guy jumping over the wall in like more rough clothing. And then he was looking through the money in a wallet. It's like he was counting up what he got. It's like, yeah, that makes sense. But then the fight choreography. Oh, my God. That was just that was beautiful. I never thought a live action 
version of My Hero would work. These guys just did it. Oh my god. And that's just part one of the mini mini series. And there's still part two in episode zero, which is weird that they're going that order, but I'll, yeah. God, I'm just. I've seen literally just a minute of content so far. I'm already a massive fan. And there's more. Oh god. This is so damn cool. Next up is part two. I can't wait to see what they do with this one. Inspired by My Hero Academia. I like how they just have it superimposing a bit. Ooh, a bit of a flashback. Or a continuation of the fight. You don't oh, and. Know what you're doing. I'm giving this back. Unlikely. Oh, God, he has backup. Also, they're speaking now. The wallet. Unnoticed. That's all I asked. Ooh, super speed. Oh! Dude. Coast clear. Yeah. Kill him. Oh, that escalated. Oh, so he put his clothes back on. Oh, and this guy's fast enough to keep up with teleportation. A teleporter? Oh, that sucks. For you. Really? Oh, God, they're even... They're even putting the Japanese from the original dub. Joins extend with super speed. Oh. Technically, he still has an advantage. He just has to go ways you can't move. Three students? Oh. Cash? Any weapon into another? Oh, that is bull! It said not firearms. You can pull in bows and arrows then. Ooh, triple team. Ooh, that actually looks like it hurt. Like, the actor, even. Ooh, they're really working well together. Freaking Gladys? Oh my god! That's Gladys. Big mistake. Ah, uh, long sword. Because he always teleports to the backpack, yeah. Honestly, the best way to deal with them would be to go straight up, but that way lies problems. What? Nobody's coming. They can't see. What? Oh, that flash yeah. effect. Perception filter or invisibility? Conceal. That is a bubble non-existent. Oh my god, that's Yeah, those are three really effective powers. Oh, you've got to be kidding me! And that was episodes one and two of UALA, which honestly were so freaking good. The second one, I liked the voice acting. I liked how confident they were, and then they showed it and they backed it up. I liked that they didn't nerf him with power. They just showed interesting little quirks and effects and how they interacted and... The really, really impressive part out of this one it wasn't just the powers. Those were cool, how they used them, how they made them look perfect. How the one guy switching out weapons was cool. How the one guy moving fast was shown perfectly. Like the super speed aspect, the strength. Establishing his strength immediately by knocking the literal blood out of the guy's stomach. By hitting him so hard he did that and he basically just ruptured organs and bled out of his mouth with a hit. And it's like the anime effect of explosive blood coming out of the mouth whenever you punch someone. I liked how they established him as a threat. And how the big guy in charge was more of an intellectual. Because he wasn't the strongest, he just has concealed. But that's perfect for a criminal. And just all of that. The setup was perfect. And on a more world-building level, I kind of like how the UA character jumping in, getting over his head, calling for help and not being able to get help, kind of reinforces something you don't very much see in a lot of anything with UA. Or hero genre in general. The idea that you're not supposed to get involved on your own. Where a lot of the hero stuff is, you know, there's an issue in My Hero Academy where people don't care. Partially because they're not allowed to care, because, you know, can't use your quirk offensively if you're not a registered hero. Partly because that way has issues and there's, you know, it's a growing part of the plot, at least in the anime I've seen so far. I think it becomes bigger later on. And then it's the central part to Vigilante. 
In this one, though, they're actually playing into that on the other side, where this guy did jump in. He did act as a hero. He's still a student. He doesn't have his license, but he's oddly enough showing why it's a bad idea to do that because he went off half-cocked without preparation. And while he's doing the right thing, he's probably going to be in a bad place for it. I mean, if this wasn't a show, you'd say, yeah, he's dead in the dish now. In this one, we know something will happen in the third episode when it comes out because it's not yet. But I just... I want to see more. I hate that it ended so soon. If that was 20 minutes long, I would have enjoyed it just as much and complained just as much when it ended. Maybe more, because I would have had 20 minutes of awesomeness. Ah, that'd be awesome. <laughs> Just, I like what they did. They did a little bit of world building. They showed the consequences of actually jumping in. They showed a beautiful power. And then the choreography to get the super strength, super speed guy, and the multi-weapon option guy. I'm just going to call it that. Technically cash, but eh, whatever. They were working perfectly together. Just the one guy hiding them because it just, you know, that's a BS quirk for someone who just wants to get what they want to get out. That is super powerful, especially if it's, you know, optional. He didn't hide anything but the people. And he didn't hide the sounds. Maybe. That, that hasn't really been clarified yet. We just saw them kind of plop out. Let's go with plop. It's either pop or plop sounds funner. And they just wasn't there anymore. Little pop sound and yeah. But he didn't hide any of the surroundings, which from a practical effect is because one, it would be a stupid power if you just can't see him, but you know it's there. Two, it probably makes it easier on the cinematography just to have them take another shot where they're just not there. So it's probably easier in that aspect. But damn, if that just didn't work so well. Also, I like the voice acting. Yeah, good level. A little quieter just because... The background music was a little loud. I wish that was a little bit louder, but that's literally the only thing I could even think to gripe about. I just loved what they did. And there's still episode zero, which is a bit longer, and I'm honestly very hyped to check it out. I want to see what's going on. I want to see what started this. I want to see what's happening. I want to see how they did it. I want to finally learn this main character's name. And can he teleport to anything or just his backpack? And that is such a freaking good power. If he can use it, certainly. If he's only able to teleport to things like his backpack, eh, less. On the other hand, there's a lot of ways to abuse that. A lot of ways. Whether he has the ability to or not, I don't know enough about his power to say. But damn! Also, cash. One weapon into another. And apparently mass was not needed to be conserved because of what he changed between. The guy could just switch between crossbows. They're not a firearm. They're a crossbow. Infinite firing crossbows. That's bull. He didn't. Well, honestly, it looked cooler without it. But that would still be a cool effect. Like, he could basically become UALA Batman. He won't because he's a villain. But damn, is that a cool power. And I'm so glad they put that in there. Just... Uh, I'm actually curious about power interactions on a fan-made production. Huh. Yeah. Let's see if I get the name right. It was definitely Riven X3I, which I did not need to look up the name for to make sure I got it right. Oh, wow, that was beautiful. If you guys haven't watched the original one, just link below. Check out episodes one and two. There's probably a bunch of things I missed because that was really detailed. They put in a lot of effects. They integrated them perfectly. And just the sheer quality of every shot is... There are movies that have a bigger budget and less solid effects. This was so good. Go check it out. If you haven't already, just do it. I'll see you guys in the next one. Adios.